Let's face it, we don't all have a YouTube studio to shoot in. Sometimes all we have is a kitchen table or a small bedroom like this. We're going to turn this small bedroom into a minimalistic YouTube setup. And just to show you how small this bedroom is, I can touch the wall with my arm right here. That is small. First things first, let's talk about how we can set up our setup for success. Now, one of the things that people often recommend, myself sometimes included, is to shoot into a corner. And the reason why people recommend that is because then you create a lot of depth between you and what is going on, making your space look a lot bigger. Sometimes you do not have the liberty to shoot in a corner and all you have is a wall, just like I have right now. But if you've watched any of my videos, I always shoot against the wall, so that is no issue. And I'm gonna show you how we can make this look good and if we can make this look good we can make anything look good the plan is to get that nice moody but cozy looking shot so for that we're going to have to turn this matte black but we're not going to paint anything and we're also not drilling any holes in the wall now to achieve this i went to a hardware store and i picked up some wood and some matte black wall paint i think together this was about 40 bucks and in the studio i put the wooden plates together and then i added two coats of matte black paint it turns out to not be super sturdy but it works great as a backdrop now that we have set up our backdrop, it is time to design the lighting because this is still a horrendous looking shot. And the best way to design your lighting is to start with a blank or in this case, a black canvas. So it's time to turn off all of the lights. Now the first light we will absolutely need is a key light because this is the main light source that we will use to light ourselves, but not like this. Let me turn that down. I'm currently being lit by the Emerin 100DS, which is a super powerful studio light, as you could just see. And I put it on some cheap Amazon light stand that I could find. It is sturdy though, so I'll just put all of the products that I talk about in this video in the description for you to check out. The Emerin 100DS is a great option as a studio light because as you can see, it is really powerful, but it's also affordable and it is of great quality. Because if you're familiar with the brand Aperture, which is a more expensive light brand geared towards the filmmaking industry, Emerin is from that same company so it's using the same chips and the same technology but it's geared more towards creators now if you're looking for a smaller studio light or a more affordable studio light than the 100 ds then the 60 ds might be a good option as you can see it is super tiny it is about half the size of the 100 ds and as you can see it is still a really great option as a studio light in case you didn't know the number of these lights actually represents the output so the higher the number the more output so a 60 ds is a little bit less powerful than the 100 ds because this has 60 5 watts, whereas the 100DS has 100 watts and 150 has 150 watts. And then the D in 60DS and 100DS, what that stands for is daylight. So this means that the light coming out of these lights matches daylight, which is 5600 Kelvin. And here's a little bonus tip for you. For that reason, you actually want to set your white balance to 5600 as well to match the temperature of the lights and make everything look accurate. If you're looking for a key light with a little bit more output or more versatility, then I would recommend you to pick up a 1 50C. Now, as you can see, it comes in two colors. We have charcoal gray and we have white. So depending on your setup, you can go with either that looks best in your room. But the reason why I would really recommend these is because these are great as key lights, but also as a light for anything else. Cause this is a full color RGB light, meaning that it will produce any color you want it to produce. It is on the pricier side compared to the other key lights, but it is a bigger bang for your buck cause you can do a lot more with these lights. By the way, when it comes to investing in lights, I'm fully aware that this costs a lot of money, right? They actually run sales throughout the Year. So if I'm ever aware of a sale, I'll put it in the description and in a pinned comment so you can save a few bucks. Besides the key light and the light stand, what is also very vital is a softbox because a softbox diffuses the light and makes the light look a lot softer. Generally, softboxes are pretty big and we simply do not have the space because we are working with very limited space. So a great softbox to use instead is, for example, this Emerin Mini Dome SE. It is super easy to set up. All you have to do is pull the rods. Let me move a bit more backwards. This is it. It is super small and it is super easy to set up and it's also super easy to break down. And I call this the pinch method because all you have to do is pinch a few times. Perfect if you have a temporary space. Now, the one that I have put on my light right now is the Aperture Mini 3. Now, this is just as small as the Emerin one. It is also super easy to set up, but it comes with a grid, whereas this one does not come with a grid. Now, what does a grid do? The grid helps with directing the light. So as you can see, it's more directed onto me and it's not spilling as much on the background. So the Aperture Mini 3 would also be a really good option if you're looking for a small light dome and you have a little bit extra cash. 
The quality of the light that you're using and the softbox are really important, but what might actually be more important to make your setup look good is the placement of the light. I always put my light right in front of me and I angle it down just a little bit to light my face evenly and to avoid accentuating any imperfections. Now, if you want to go for a more cinematic look or a more dramatic looking look, then you can put the light on a 45 degree angle, which will create some shadows in your face, but it will also create this little Rembrandt triangle that I've talked about in other videos. So I'll link them in the description if you want to learn more about that. A big challenge that we need to overcome in a small space is that we literally do not have any space to put a ton of light stands and cameras down. So I turned to YouTube because yes, I watch YouTube too. And I started looking for some solutions to minimize this setup. Now, quite some people recommended to get the Manfrotto magic arm, but this thing is literally 300 bucks and it doesn't even come with a clamp that we can use to attach it to the light stand. So unless this is made out of actual magic, I would not know why we would spend this much money on it. Pretty sure it's great, but I kept on looking on Amazon and I actually found this mounting arm for just 30 bucks. Now for 30 bucks, you can now mount your camera onto your light stand as it already comes with a clamp and that will free up some floor space and just makes your setup a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier. I gotta admit, I kind of love this setup already because I really like moody, dark looking setups, but let's spice up the background a little bit. And the funnest and the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is by using RGB tube lights. Now, ever since since these were released, I have been using them, as you can see in every single YouTube video that I've made in the past few years. I love them so much and it's such an easy way to make your setup look really good. Now this one specifically is a PT2C, but Emerin also has different sizes and they also have the T2C, so without the pixel feature. But in this case, I'm going to be using the PT2C because I think it is the perfect size for our backdrop as our setup isn't super big. I'm going to place this tube on a little tripod that actually comes with the tube and then I'm going to turn it to the backdrop to avoid any spilling on our face. As we talked about earlier in the video, if you want to create depth in your video when you do not have a lot of depth going on, there's a few ways to still create some depth. And one of them is by using a lens with a wide aperture. We're shooting this video at an f2.8, which is already a nice depth of field in my opinion. But if you want to push it even more, you can use a lens at f1.8 or even f1.4 to create even more depth between you and your wall. And since this is a wooden backdrop, you can actually drill some holes in it. You can hang some things, you can add some plants to it and create different layers, which allows you to create some depth in your setup as well. However, I'm going to keep this super simple because I want to show you what you can do with just a few lights and no decorations. Having said that, I am actually going to use one piece of decoration, but it's a light bulb, so it counts. Now the light bulb that I chose is an Aperture B7C. If you want, honestly, you can just go for a regular light bulb like this. I actually bought a long one because I think that would look really good. For some reason, of course, as I'm filming this video, I completely lost it and it will probably surface when I'm done with this video. But the B7C is great because one, it is made for filmmaking, two, it is dimmable, and three, it's an RGB light. So that means that you do not just need to use like the warm light that comes from this, for example, but you can set it to every single light. This is the app that I use for all of my lights. It is the Sidus app. And as you can see, I call it small bedroom. And what I can do is I can turn off all the lights and turn on all of the lights in one go. So instead of using different brands, having to pull up different kind of apps or turning everything off and on individually, you can all do that in one app. And if you want to match the colors of these two, I can just click on the PT2C, for example, I can see exactly what color it is and I can copy that to the light bulb. Things like this makes your creative life just so much easier. So that is why I always recommend to just invest in one specific ecosystem that fulfills your needs. For fun, let's just take a quick look at the before and what we've done now with literally just three lights, but this is only one setup. So let me show you a few different setups. If you have another tube light, for example, you can create some really fun backdrops like the ones that I use in all of my videos. What you could also do is add an RGB light behind you and then change the color of your backdrop to any color that you want. Honestly, I could go on and on and on. So I am open to suggestions. Let me know in the comments what kind of setup you would like to see next. Now, if creating a black backdrop is too much work for you or you do not like this dark moody look and you want to see some examples of what to do with a white wall, then I recommend you to watch this video right here. Oh, these are so heavy. <laughs> it's so heavy, I cannot even hold it still. 